Hey everybody, today we're going to look at steering dampers and specifically the Scott steering damper which is the best steering damper money can buy for your motorcycle. Um, we're going to look at uh, how to install that, um, how it works and basically everything about uh, as much as we can talk about steering dampers. And as you can see the bike here, if you've seen my previous videos, is 100% fully stock in enduro mode all the rally kit is taken off there's no nav tower the fuel tanks are the regular nine liter tanks so basically this bike uh, is uh configured reconfigured for enduro and motocross um and the awesome thing about this bike if you've seen my other videos in uh the uh with the rally configuration is it's so versatile i mean this is such a fun bike to have because uh, you can do anything from in this in this configuration rally enduro uh, trail riding uh, you can ride it you can commute to work if you want if uh, if it's a couple uh, kilometers away and if you put a couple fuel tanks and a, you know a nav tower for GPS on it you can do adventure touring and rally riding so this is one of the most versatile bikes I've ever had it's uh, it's amazing and uh, yeah, it's just a whole lot of fun. So let's get started with these steering dampers. All right, so here we have the 2020 KTM 450 EXCF, six days. Uh, let's take a look at how the steering damper is mounted, what it does, how it looks. So the steering dampers are always mounted at the conjunction between the handlebar uh, and the steering stem. So we we're talking about the handlebar, which moves. Uh, obviously from left to right and you, there's a fixed point which is the frame or the steering stem which is stationary um, now you'll see that uh, there's uh, a couple of black brackets here this bracket and this uh, uh, I guess it's a handlebar riser so the steering damper is um, screwed in to actually the handlebar okay this is where it's connected to so the steering damper moves with the handlebar okay now what you see underneath actually is the steering damper arm right here which is uh connect which which goes into the steering damper to the internals and there's basically a uh a flipper if you will on the inside that moves around in the bath of oil that um basically creates resistance so this part is uh fixed to the frame okay so this part doesn't move right Let's see if i get this out of the way from here you can see that the arm stays uh uh parallel to the frame okay and that's basically how uh you get resistance in the steering essentially because uh you know you have basically uh, instead of uh, just the steering bearing and the steering stem, you have the hydraulic steering damper uh, creating resistance. If you've seen my previous video about the KTM Rally Kit Shakedown, I talk about what the steering damper does, how it feels during riding. But uh, essentially, it's all about uh, a hydraulic feel to the steering. So I'll post a link up here for that video. But if you imagine uh, when you drive a car, you feel resistance in the steering wheel. Um, that's because the steering is connected to the wheels, but through a hydraulic uh, power steering pump. On a motorcycle without a steering damper, you're basically, it's like a bicycle. So the handlebars kind of move freely without any resistance left to right. When you put the steering damper, you add a hydraulic, uh, basically, I mean, it's not a pump, but it's a, uh, it's a damp, it's a hydraulic damper that's going to give resistance to the steering. Now, why is the Scott's damper the best steering damper on the market? Well, it's the only one that has high speed and low speed adjustability. And these are basically two uh, uh, dials on the steering damper. Turning it uh, clockwise is hard uh, setting and turning it anti-clockwise is soft setting. So um, if you don't want any resistance, you can always just turn it down to the lowest setting and you're not going to have any resistance in the steering but the beauty of the scott steering damper is that you have under this cap uh 
a high speed setting. Now the high speed is just like in your suspension where if you uh, turn this uh, to the clockwise or anti-clockwise, you're basically gonna have a uh, setting that controls uh, fast shocks in the steering. So whenever you hit a, for example, a rock or anything that upsets the steering, even if you turn it fast, the low speed, if you have it turned off, it's not gonna affect the weight of the steering, but again, hitting a rock or going high speed and uh, going over a bump and maybe in the wrong direction, your deflection of the steering is gonna be really upsetting on the handling of the bike. The high speed damping will basically put a stop to that and it'll essentially keep you from wiping out if you're, I mean, if you're going too fast. The last setting available on Scott's and not really on any other uh, dampers are the sweep controls, which are right here. And they're on both sides, okay? So, so the sweep control, basically, you uh, put it uh, to, to the same setting on both sides. And um, what that does is basically, if you imagine that the um, steering angle of the bike is a cone, like this, lock to lock, the sweep setting is going to basically uh, uh, tell the damper where to damp in the steering angle. So essentially you can have it damp at the very narrow part of the steering, which will ba basically be only when it's, I don't know, from about here to here. And if you have it on the max sweep, it's gonna take as much of the steering angle as possible and damp all of it. So, uh, you know, stock, it's maybe set to 80 or 70% of the steering angle. Um, so the reason why you wanna have it set to a, na a more narrow steering angle than what your full steering angle is, is so that uh, essentially when you're maneuvering at low speed, for example, in, uh, you know, in the forest around trees or whatever, you can sort of get that last bit of lock without any resistance and you can uh, get there easier because essentially you're not gonna need steering damper at high speed at full lock. You're not gonna be turning the wheel up to full lock at high speed because you're gonna crash. So you only need uh, damping at, uh, you know, maximum 60 to 70% of the steering angle and if you're even going, um, you know, faster, you'll need less than that, you know, maybe for motocross. The next question people will have is, do I need a steering damper? And to answer that, you have to, you have to know what type of riding you're going to be doing. So, um, the main thing that steering dampers help prevent is, uh, I think, um, they really help in endurance. So on a rally or even on an adventure tour on a bike like this, if you're off-roading at high speed for a long time, you're obviously gonna get fatigue in your arms because of the constant vibration uh, side to side of the handlebars going over, you know, whatever. Now, the steering damp is there obviously to damp that vibration and basically keep you straight and narrow um, for, for, for longer. And that's really the main thing that it's there for, especially when you get tired in your arms, you get arm pump. And when you get arm pump, that obviously means your arms are, your muscles are fatigued and they stiffen up. At that point, you're really in danger of losing the, the grip on the handlebars and flying off the bike at high speed. So that's, that's really dangerous. Um, and uh, the steering damp is there to prevent that. The other thing that um, I noticed from riding the bike on the road is that this is a very light footed bike. So, um, especially during acceleration, when the weight transfers to the rear of the bike, the front end becomes very light. And when you're accelerating hard on the road, uh, the, as the front tends to lift up, you obviously get, um, you, you, you get in situations where you get a tank slapper effect with the handlebars and they vibrate like this. And, and that could be at high speed up to 80, 90, 100 kilometers per hour. So obviously if that gets out of control 
and you get a tank slapper where the the handlebars start oscillating uncontrollably they just don't stop and they get worse and worse and you you fly off the bike the steering damper is obviously there to prevent that and uh that's personally one of my uh biggest um pluses because um i i still ride this bike uh on the road uh sometimes to races or something else um i have the van now but it, it's still um it's still much better than not having one especially riding on the road with this bike so um do you need this one specifically uh the scott steering damper uh majority of people no because again um it's essentially where money is no object and you need the best of the best because you're gonna race and you want to win in a rally or uh or are you gonna be you know touring the world going around the world or you know going through long adventure tours uh off-road things like that um but i i would recommend a less expensive steering damper one that's more simpler maybe with just a, a one speed control and and uh anybody could benefit that and um you know i think that it helps on motocross tracks especially because during uh rhythm sections or even jumps um you know the steering tends to go left to right especially if you're not dead straight and uh and if obviously you have an enduro bike the suspension is softer so it doesn't react as well on a on, on motocross so that really helps with arm arm pump and fatigue as well um maybe obviously if you're doing hard enduro and things like that you you probably don't need it because a you're not going that fast and b i mean Hard to do is just you know that's another that's another level. It just uh, it's a vertical sport as well, so you're not going to really have that many places where it comes in handy, and it might actually get in the way just because of the fact that you need the lock to lock steering all the time on hard and duo. But otherwise, I think it's uh, a great addition, and uh, I'm going to show you now how to install it, and um, it's pretty easy, and I obviously recommend doing it yourself because a uh, any, I guess, neighborhood mechanic is not just going to have uh, experience doing steering dampers. And B, I obviously always recommend doing everything uh, on your own because uh, when it breaks, you know how to fix it if you're in the middle of nowhere. And B, you know that you did it right. So let's get started. All right, so mounting a steering damper basically involves uh, removing the upper triple clamp and it's actually quite simple because the forks are really only held onto the bike in two places and that is here and here lower triple clamp up upper triple clamp uh, so basically once you take the wheel off um, and take out the fork guards which is pretty simple uh, Removing the forks is as easy as unscrewing one, two, three, four. Same on the other side and the forks come out, okay? Then at that point you have the upper triple clamp, which is held in by a screw there and a pinch bolt, okay? And essentially, once you have these four bolts off and the forks off, um, the upper trip clamp can come off after unscrewing this. And then inside of this, uh, the steering head of the frame, you have the steering stem, which uh, is connected to the lower triple clamp. And the steering stem comes up to the upper triple clamp and you have uh, bearings at the top and the bottom. All right, and actually um, we're gonna have to block the wheel uh, so because when you remove the upper triple clamp, essentially what happens is nothing is holding the steering stem in, which is basically inside of the uh, inside of the uh, steering head. There's nothing holding it here, so when you release it, it can just basically fall out of the bike. Uh, and if the wheel is still on, it's harder for it to fall out, but it could it can move forward and and fall out that way. So we'll have to block the steering wheel the uh the 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 front wheel i mean from basically coming out completely 
um, just because we don't need to. We, we only need to get to the top of the triple clamp. We don't need to take everything off. But if you were ever to uh, do uh, a steering head replacement or lubricating the steering heads, which is recommended at like 30 hours, uh, that's how you do it. You would take off the forks after removing the front wheel and basically taking out the both triple clamps and just lubricating the uh the bearings which we're going to see in a minute all right first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh handlebar and there's two clamps here with four bolts All right, so now your handlebar is actually loose and uh, you can basically put it out of the way. Actually, a good idea would be to take the mask off as well. And that's a really easy, uh, just one, two here. So that doesn't get in the way. Now I am going to be a bit cheeky here because I have my awesome van and I'm just using this uh, tie strap and I'm suspending my handlebar from the ceiling. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely not necessary to remove everything from the handlebar and pull it off. Uh, you want to just leave it hanging off, but find a way to secure it, you know, so it doesn't bounce around and get in the way. Next thing we're doing is taking off the handlebar uh, holders. All right, so that's two screws, Allen's, and these are Loctited in. So you'll need a breaker bar. So let's see what we're dealing with here. Um, you can see that the hole on the uh, handlebar supports uh, is offset. That means that this can go in two directions. Um, this way, which will move the handlebars closer to you, and this way, which will move farther farther from you. And there's another adjustment, uh, which is the location of the risers. And there's actually two holes in the upper triple clamp, which we'll see in a minute. And uh, that can also go either in the front or the back. And mine are set up to uh, actually be the farthest away. I might actually change that because I want to try the handlebars a bit closer to me. Sorry for skipping around, but actually this would be a good time to remove the steering damper from the handlebar risers. Should have done that before I removed the handlebar support, but we can do it now. And off it comes. Just two screws, as you can see. And there's our beautiful steering damper. Here you can see the steering damper arm. And as I said, that is connected to a uh, flipper inside, which is resisted by oil. And there's also uh, uh, some maintenance that this requires maybe every once uh, every year or two, depending on your riding style. And essentially it involves getting a few special tools from Scott's. Uh, that that includes a puller that pulls the uh, that pulls the this uh, uh, bit out from the inside 
Uh, and then it involves essentially just uh, unscrewing the lid, emptying out the oil, uh, screwing it back up, and then using these as oil fillers. So you're going to basically fill that in. Um, you're going to change some gaskets in there. There's a gasket out here. But once a year is probably enough. So let's take off the second handlebar support. And then this is the steering stem screw that holds the upper trip clamp in. We're also going to take off these four bolts from the forks. Now this is the, uh, the riser that obviously has the hole for the screw for supporting the steering damper. This is what secures the damper to the handlebars and keeps it on the same axis. All right, so this is coming out, the screw's coming out along with my handlebar support because probably all the locks that I used uh, just glued it in there. That's fine. And off we come. You have uh, two places to mount this, either the, uh, the rear screw hole or the front one. Okay, so that's going to move your handlebars to the front or the back. And also you can turn the handlebar support this way or that way to also give you three or five millimeters um, front and back, front or back uh, for the handlebars. All right, next we're going to loosen the fork clamps. Okay, and the last thing that is holding uh, this uh, trip clamp is these, uh, this pinch bolt and this uh, uh, steering stem screw. Another thing we could do is take off the speedometer. And there goes your speedometer. Now, in order to loosen that and lift the steering stem off the uh, forks, we're actually going to gonna get to this pinch bolt. And only way to get there is going to be to loosen the um, the uh, the uh, the dolly. Now, this actually installs straight on to the steering. Um, uh, head of the frame and there's also a pinch bolt there that all you can do is loosen and I'm just going to move it out of the way and now we could just slide that All right, that's loose enough. Don't need to take it out. And finally, we have the steering stem. Now, this is the last screw holding uh, the triple clamp, the lower triple clamp, into the bike from underneath the steering stem going through here. So again, have the wheel blocked uh, from moving out. And uh, yeah, hope it doesn't fall apart. Yeah, that just comes out. Now on your stock bike, this uh, is actually a fatter uh, or taller screw. Um, this comes with the uh, steering damper bracket. So it needs to be sort of shorter because the steering damper sits on top of this situation here. 
and there's not enough clearance for the steering damper with the stock screw so this comes in the scope supply of the steering damper bracket now if this is hard to budge it doesn't come off just to come right off get just a rubber mallet a small one if you have one and just tap it There we go. And there is your upper triple clamp. Set that aside. Now we have a uh, O-ring here. And then uh, we have a protective sleeve, which covers the steering head bearing, the upper steering head bearing. Uh, pulling that out, you'll actually get, you'll see inside the bearing, and that's what you need to grease. In addition to the one below, um, if we had the whole fork removed and the, steer and the front wheel removed, you could actually just slide everything out right now. Uh, if that wasn't supported, if the wheel wasn't supported, you might actually get the whole fork come out from, uh, this would just go in and pop out. Um, but this is what we have. Uh, now, the bike stock would just look kind of like this. Um, this is actually also included in the scope of supply of the steering damper bracket. The stock one on the bike is a little bit is a little bit uh, also taller, so it is silver and it's a little bit taller. This needs to be shorter because it has to accommodate the extra thickness of the steering damper dolly. So let's look at the supply again. So let's talk about what we need uh, on your bike. Uh, if you just go, you can't just go and buy the the steering damper and just slap it on your bike because pretty much all bikes don't come with the mounting equipment. Um, so each bike is going to need mounting equipment. You're going to need a dolly that sits on the frame on the steering head. Uh, and includes a pin here which is free floating okay it's in uh it's in some grease in there and it, it just pops out uh but it sits in there all right and you're going to have the risers for the handlebars which is fixing the handlebars so this moves around and this stays fixed all right this is actually pretty expensive i'm not even gonna i'm not gonna talk about the price here because my wife's probably watching this but uh, from KTM, you know, you got to pay an arm and a leg for this for this stuff, but it fits perfectly. That's that's the that's the positives and negatives of buying from of buying OEM. Uh, Scott's website has all the specs you need for the brackets, but you know, any bike you got out there, Honda, KTM, Yamaha, Kawasaki, they'll all have aftermarket or factory brackets to mount this stuff. So this is what you're going to need to put on the bike. And uh, that's basically it. Now, we went uh, backwards because I actually had to take the stuff off because I'm going to do a little modification to it uh, for um, rally racing because I need a uh, extra bracket to hang off here to hold the nav tower. But that's for another day. So let's do installation just so that you can see uh, what you're going to be doing when you uh, actually install this thing. So actually, with a stock bike, you're going to have uh, it looking like this. So no steering damper dolly, no steering damper. So you're going to have basically the same kind of deal here. And you, what you can do is pop this off along with the protective ring and then you're going to take your steering damper dolly you're going to mount that to the uh outside basically the frame okay now the way this has to be mounted is that the dolly has to be flush with 
the frame, the orange part, basically. So when you put this on, okay, this is not flush, okay? There you go. So get that as straight as possible. Feel it with your uh, fingertips, okay? And the other thing you have to do is straighten the dolly so that it's perfectly basically lined up with the frame all right so you're gonna actually have to eyeball this what i like to do is actually use uh calipers to measure the distance between the right side of the dolly and the frame so this has to be perfectly aligned the best way to do that get your calipers okay and again, you're gonna have to eyeball it uh, with the edge of the frame, but you're gonna want it to be uh, as close as possible. So if we have 14.26 on the right side, uh, on, the, on the left side, it's a little bit less. Okay, and that's, how, that's essentially what you're doing here. Uh, obviously you can eyeball it, but this should be precise. And 13.5 is about right. Now, you should have it tight so that it doesn't bob around. I'm gonna hand tighten it first. And then we'll torque it. So 13.46 and 13.46. Uh, now, again, make sure it's flush with the frame you want to have it perfectly flush with the with the steering head okay tighten it a little more now you're going to want this to be tightened to 15 newton meters this pinch bolt Uh, Loctite 243 applied to the thread. So pull that out all the way before tightening it. Loctite 243. That's medium strength thread locker. That's 15. So we'll have our protective outer seal. On top of that, our protection cap, and then the O-ring around the steering stem. Now that's the dolly mounted. Now we're going to go back to mounting the steering clamp, the uh, upper drip clamp. Make sure your throttle cables are outside of the upper drip clamp, towards the rear of the bike. Now, what you're going to have to do here is obviously align three holes uh, to get this triple clamp on. Now, don't force it in, but with your um, bike stand, okay, make sure it's sitting on a bike stand. Uh, you can see as I lift it up, the steering stem comes into alignment better, and I can tap that in. There you go. So use finesse. There's threads here. Don't don't wail on it. All right. And um, your manual is going to tell you what, uh, how much the fork should be protruding. Uh, for the 450 XCF, it's two. Um, indentations so let's get it there
Make sure your pinch bolt is as loose as you can as you can get it. Actually, we're all the way in. So you can see. We're about two indents in. Now, uh, you want to get these forks tightened up first. The torque setting is right on the fork. 17 Newton meters. That's important because too loose. Obviously, you're going to the forks are going to fall out of your bike on the road too tight. And when you uh, have crashes or bumps, these forks are actually designed to de uh, to uh, instead of break, they sort of deform and the clamps sort of get out of alignment and the forks, uh, you know, if they're straight like this, they kind of go like this or like this. And you can feel it in the wheel that it's sort of uh, crooked, but the handlebar is not bent. It's just that your forks are bent out of out of shape a little bit. Not bent the forks themselves, but they're uh, they moved inside the triple clamps. That's because these are designed to give away a little bit. What you do to fix that is just loosen uh, all four, eight actually, triple clamp bolts. Slap the steering back and forth, lock to lock, so that it, they line back up parallel. And then tighten the bottom ones and tighten the top ones back to back to spec and you know that's the beauty of these bikes is they're pretty indestructible as long as you don't get any serious accidents now the third spot we're gonna uh, attach the uh, triple clamp is at the steering stem now this step is important because this screw basically tensions the steering stem from here to the lower clamp and subsequently it applies pressure to the steering head bearings on both sides. That's why there's a precise torque setting for this and that is a uh, torque of 12 Newton meters. So don't talk to me, don't watch this video unless you have a torque wrench, okay? You can't do anything uh, outside of changing the oil without a torque wrench, all right? So, you know, I have two. One is uh, from about five Newton meters all the way to, uh, or one Newton meter up to 25. The other one's from 30 to like 200 Newton meters. So uh, you're not gonna be able to do this without a torque wrench. For, just forget about it. So have your bike lifted up. Now we can tighten the pinch bolt and that's actually at 20 Newton meters. Actually, simple way to tighten the uh, pinch bolt with the steering damper dolly on is uh, duh, turning the handlebar, turning the forks around. That way you get the access from here and you can torque it down to the specified setting. You can also turn it this way and get access from here. Now we're tightening the handlebar supports to 40 Newton meters. This is my second torque wrench with a uh, higher settings.
40. Forty. Now we can actually get the uh, the steering damper mounted. So again, we're going to need Loctite on the threads of the steering damper bolts, and that's going to be ten newton meters. Uh, now, when you mount the bolt, what you're doing is you're inserting the dolly pin through the uh, through the arm. So make sure that's positioned correctly. Okay, remember it's free floating. You're gonna pop that on and uh, get those screws into the uh, risers, the handlebar risers. Okay. Ten. Ten. All right, and that steering damper is mounted. All we have left is the handlebar. So I'm gonna loosen up my strap. However you're holding this thing, if you are holding it. All right. Now, you'll see that you have these alignment uh, sort of gauge holes here. Okay, now, best way to get those in place is uh, mount your your uh, holding brackets. All right, once you have these hand tight, you'll be able to adjust the handlebar to your liking and you can just see them, the, uh, the markings there. Okay, and that'll get you pretty much straight on. All right, I think we're about there. Yeah. All right, and when you tighten these, uh, we're going to do 10 newton meters again, but one thing you want to pay attention to is the gaps that are here. So you want to make sure those gaps are even because when you tighten these down, these two screws, they're not going to be, um, they're not going to be touching. Okay, so let's see, let's see what I'm talking about here. So go back and forth between them. And as you see the gap close up, you'll hit 10 Newton meters. And there you go, steering damper mounted. All right, as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward job. 
I'd always do it myself because uh, that's an important part of the bike. You get to do uh, some routine maintenance by lubricating the steering head bearings and, uh, and the job is pretty easy. Um, the brackets uh, can be found on the KTM Power Parts catalog and they come with instructions obviously. Uh, they're not very good actually because they are adapted to multiple bikes. Uh, Scott's has plenty of documentation on their steering damper. They have uh, maintenance uh, documents, everything you need. I'm gonna post the link right down here in the description for all the links to these parts and the documentation. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys more importantly enjoy riding the bike with with uh, with your new steering damper. Our next videos are going to be a couple uh, more maintenance videos specifically on uh, clutch maintenance and also uh, valve clearances. So that's a, a really important one. That's the most important tuning you need for the engine to run perfectly. Uh, so we're going to take off the fuel tank, take off the valve cover and uh, do the valve clearances. And uh, I'll have a video soon coming up on uh, chain maintenance and how I have a uh, uh, hundred hours and uh, three or 4,000 kilometers on my bike and the chain is basically like brand new. So stay tuned.